Rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long-lost grace speaks to us all. Cross the fog to the lands between, to stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. <laughs> like that's ever gonna happen. Some. Fun fact, gamers, YouTube's copyright system uses a Skynet-esque robot to find songs, so that's all the star you're gonna get. Funner fact, there's a butt slam Ash of War in Elden Ring, where you jump up in the air and slam people with your hiney. If I've learned anything from these runs, it's that a good Ash of War can carry you through the game. So is the butt slam a good Ass of War or a bad Ass of War? Bad Ass of War still sounds good. On my quest to find the most fun character in Elden Ring, I thought it would be fun to bring everyone's favorite ogre, Shrek, into the lands between. If you want to watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We find new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Oh, and follow Julian on Twitch. They play Hades, and I'm going to make them play Elden Ring too. Now, let's get started on this ogre-powered character. We'll start off as a confessor for the minimum faith requirement that we will never need to level up again. This build has incredibly low stat requirements, it's kind of nice. Unfortunately, you can't change the ears in character creation for whatever reason. I guess FromSoft just thought that ears weren't as noticeable on a face as nose bridge depth. I'm starting off pretty strong, but then I realized I made a bit of a mistake when I was trying to give him that DreamWorks face. Okay, wait. Why does it kind of look like Ben Shapiro? Let's say, hypothetically, ogres were like onions. That would mean, objectively speaking, ogres have layers. Oof. Just thinking about that makes me want to jump off a cliff. Wow, what a coincidence. Once we hit Limgrave, it is a rapid-fire hitting of fairy tale creatures. Santa sells us a crafting kit, Fiona gives us a donkey, and we save Humpty Dumpty from a hole. At least he's learned to avoid heights. We also grab the wet blade for Ashes of War and a Physic Flask for some fancier Gatorades. Close to that church, we can get the Shrek Super Slam started, with a Teardrop Scarab in the Mistwoods for the Heavy Slam and Ash of War. You can put this on virtually any weapon, which is neat, makes you jump up high and bring it down hard, and if you made your hips larger in character creation, you get a 20% damage boost. You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? Also, there are better Physic tiers here, Stamina Boost and Charged Attack. Shrek now has a powerful keister, but hey, does he fart with that thing? He can. If we go to the Weeping Peninsula and scoop up a Golden Seed first, then we'll eat another Dung Beetle for the Poison Mist spell, which is just as good now as it will be in the endgame. Doesn't scale better with Arcane if you have the Dragon Communion Seal, it doesn't even get better if you upgrade your seal. It applies just as quickly and the poison does just as much damage. Pessimistically, that means it obviously sucks. Optimistically, it means we have an endgame powered spell. Kind of. Three Sacred Tears while we're here. One, two, three. We still haven't slain the dragon, but it's on my to-do list. First, we have to warp to Grail, rob some graves, grab a somber stone for absolutely no reason, and then get killed by a big old puppy. It was on the way to buy the spiked Cestus, which you can get before the regular Cestus, but don't worry, I'm not going to be using the punch part of them all that much. Less than five times, I promise. Fiona shows us her castle, which is a nice reminder to grab our pickle. Technically, we could kill the big dragon with just our farts, but that would take too long, so I punched it with the bloody Cestus as well. I have an audience watching, and I don't want to just hang out for a half an hour hotboxing a dragon to death. By the way, this isn't Donkey's wife. That's a different dragon. This one's gray. His wife is red. Don't even start. Since we don't have any stat requirements, we can just pump that vigor to make Shrek extra thick. If you ever find yourself near Fort Faroth, don't forget to stop by, scoop up the Dectus Medallion, a Golden Rune 12 and Radigan Sword Seal, which will boost your Vigor, Endurance, Strength, and Dexterity by 5 points, while lowering your damage resistance by 15%. I've actually started to kind of dislike it recently, since I think there's a less punishing alternative that's also easy to find and use early game, but even if you don't want to use it, you can sell over 3,000 runes, which is probably a level early game. The talisman I want is in the High Road Cave, where we can butt slam some bats and it killed them. It's not the best metric, since the bats don't have a lot of HP, so let's test it against the Guardian Golem instead. He's a large lad. Lad, but large lads go down fast, it's why Fiona likes Shrek so much. The booty slam has two hits, the direct cheek and the shockwave from the clap of the cheeks. Direct cheek deals more damage and stance damage, but the clap will also deal stance and regular damage. It's not an either or thing, it can be both. Since the guardian golem has hitboxes on both of his ankles, we actually get three hits each slam, knocking him over right away. But slam's pretty sweet so far. It doesn't work super well against the invading Robin Hood, or should I say nerd juice. His bloody knives 
knives make us bleed, and when you're not wearing armor, bleed happens very, very, very fast. Basically, we're just jumping up to sit down on a knife, and that is not good for your digestive floor. Our only strategy is waiting for Yura to show up and kind of carry us through. Rumble Stiltskin goes a bit smoother since he tries to block more with his big tower shield, but this booty can climb a tower like nobody's business. Then, we can come back and buy some pickles from him, as well as the recipe for pickles. Shrek is a great chef. He makes a mean weed rat stew. Call that Shrev. Can't really portmanteau chef and Shrek. The mine of the seven dwarves in Limgrave is a great place for smithing stones, but it's also a great place to die if you're not paying attention and fall down the elevator hole. At the bottom, Grumpy is extra grumpy, and he got taller. Good for him. But our big old butt hits both of his ankles like the guardian golem, which means that the stance breaks and we sit on his face. Not the worst way to go out, honestly. The golem drops the roar medallion, which will boost the damage of roar ashes of war, and that finally matters, so it's finally worth mentioning. I went to the church of Ayla to upgrade our fists, since that boosts the ash of war damage as well, but Ronnie was there. I guess she's the moon the cow jumped over in fairy tale land? The spirit calling bell will help us out later. Now we need to do the roar. So we're gonna go hunt for some death spaghetti to feed the big bad wolf, so she'll teach us to huff and puff and blow houses down. First one comes from the tibia mariner, who is pretty easy with the butt slam. The cheeks hit the boatman, and the clap hits his skeleton friends. Next one will come from the black knife assassin in the death touched catacombs. But our ass ass touches this ass assassin in the death touched catacombs when of in cold food out hot eat the food sorry uh the assassin was really hard with flame of the red mains in the rando run but hilariously the butt slam's pretty great for it we end up jumping over its attacks and staggering it with big damage next death spaghetti is in lernia so we're gonna do some stone farming while we're here little fun thing these poison swamp turd monsters will explode if you poison them it looks rad as hell and you should always do it if you can anyway stones silver feet stones seed stones stones dex tier lobster stones stones forest stones spirits bring up to the Bellum Grace, get the Sacred Tear, and make our way to the Tibia Mariner. We already fought one. I'm not even sure if this one has upgrades over the Limgrave version, so it goes fast. Butt Slam. The last death spaghetti we need is in the Black Knife Catacombs. There is a Black Knife Assassin in here too, but I don't need to fight it, so we won't. You get to ride up a guillotine, which is pretty fun, before finding the lever to open up the boss door to the Cemetery Shade. It has very little HP, but does a lot of damage. I want to make it clear though, it has very little HP. This fight has two hits, us hitting the shade and our ass hitting the floor, with a shockwave that kills the shade. Now we can trade in all that death spaghetti with the Big Bad Wolf, and they'll give us the Beast Roar Ash of War. This is an another one that can go on virtually any weapon, but I want to keep it on fists. If we run out of magic, Shrek can throw hands. Until then, it's butts, burps, booty blasts. Since the other pair of Cestus are locked behind Margit, let's go turn the Fell Omen into the Smell Omen. I summoned Lancelot to help us, and we quickly set about slapping these buns across Margit's face in hopes of breaking his stance. Once he was down, I hit him with the better out than in, but he stood up too fast. After a big aerial attack, though, I was able to get the affliction. I don't think it was all that important, though. Our butt just hits him hard enough to stop him from moving. Taking him down unlocks Gostock and his shop, but I just have him open up the main gate, then butt slam him and violate the Geneva Convention by slowly killing him with chemical warfare. Shrek might be a war criminal, but it gives us an extra silver pickle, and we can still buy the Cestus from the round table hold, then level him up. I didn't have to tell you about that. I could have left that out of the video, but I won't lie, because lying isn't what heroes do. Before we get a friend, first we need to get dressed. It's much harder to make friends if you're walking around in the buff. Our outfit of choice is being worn by the cows who jumped over the moon who are worshiping a beanstalk avatar. If I tried to farm the cows before dealing with the avatar, it would end up just chasing us every time. So it's time for fumigation. Funnily enough, the avatar ends up smashing all of its worshipers. It's almost as though those who claim a divine connection for the adoration of the masses are indifferent to and often the direct cause of the worshippers suffering. After we beat the beanstalk, we start burping on cows until they give us a vest. It's a farm but I don't feel like doing the math, it only took seven minutes. Probably just because there's so many cows to farm in this old McDonald land. Now that we're sharply dressed, I think we can go find some puss. After mastering gravity to fall down a cliff like an absolute pro, we make it to the cliff bottom catacombs. Inside, some other ogres ogre power us, but we manage to get the page ashes to summon puss and boots. I don't know why I went further and fought the Erd Tree Burial Watchdog, but it was a good place to test out the beast roar. For whatever reason, I remember hearing that it had good stance breaking, but that doesn't seem to be the case. We brought this thing almost all the way down to zero and never broke its stance with the roar. That's fine though, because its range is absolutely absurd. Shrek's roar is the closest 
closest we've come to an archer so far, and I'm including the Link Run, who had a literal bow. With a furry friend to help us, we can take out the Clean Rot Knights in the abandoned cave. I'm guessing it was abandoned because the floor is poop, or because the Clean Rot Knights aren't fun. They're less not fun with a helper. Puss is pretty great since he shoots fire arrows, and we can deal some pretty great damage with the Butt Slam as long as we have a distraction for the second knight. After the blocky one goes down, the second one is easy. No blocking means it's just Butt Slam after Butt Slam until that stance breaks. They give us the Golden Scarab Talisman, boosting our rune acquisition by 20% or 56% with a pickle. We need to get paid. Shrek likes his wallet like he likes his women, thick and green. Since we have two Ashes of War, we need two weapons, leveling up at the same time, so that's a lot of smithing stones. Quickly now, down the Raya Lucaria Crystal Cave, we'll fight the Crystallion. If you've been watching these for a while, you know that this blue meanie dies after you break its stance, and our butt breaks stance really, really fast. Then we can head to the Ruin Strewn Precipice, where we can booty slam some more bats while getting the smithing stones, of course. The Magma Worm isn't too much of a problem, unless it starts charging. Our butt slam is deceptively good at tracking, at least against bosses that have really big hitboxes. After getting a stance break in phase two, I applied the Shrek gas to poison it, so when I ran out of red Gatorade, I just ran away and let the gas take it out. The flatulent power reminded me of another green character I built, Poison Ivy. If I had a nickel for every time I built a green character that killed enemies with poison clouds, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. So once we ride the elevator up to Altus, I grab a quick sacred tear, a smithing stone bell bearing, and then proceed to slowly kill the headless horseman with poison. You really just have to keep applying poison, and it dies. Since I didn't have anything else to do, I decided to read the one D&D &D playtest material since it's been out for a month and I hadn't read it and I kind of have a D&D &D YouTube channel so I probably should have. I'll make a video on my thoughts on the D&D &D channel but spoilers, it's fine. Y'all need to calm the F down. It's not like you know the rules to 5e anyway. Why do you care about the new rules if you never learned the old ones? Killing the Tree Sentinel early is nice for the runes, but we can't get into Far Far Away without killing two shard bearers. One of them messed with our marriage, so let's go take down the fairy godmother. First, we have to fight another dragon. It's blue and gray, not Donkey's wife. We're all good. It's totally fine that we sat on her face. Fiona and Shrek have a very modern relationship. We can grab the key for the Raya Lucaria Academy, then storm the gates to fight Honest John, but this time the fox has a big ass sword. And he's so fast, it's hard to get him with the butt slams. Meaning our best option is to hear the roar. Thankfully, he doesn't have a lot of health, so we're able to get him down pretty fast. Prince Charming is outside and can parry a lot of things, but you can't parry these cheeks, so it's not really an issue. Fairy Godmother is also pretty easy. She has a lot of kids, and before we commit to having kids with Fiona, maybe we should try babysitting first. Shrek is great at babysitting, since the sitting kills one of the kids and the shockwave is enough to kill other kids around it. Admittedly, I decided to punch Renala after she dropped down the second time, so I'd have enough magic in phase two to summon puss and then butt slam. That was a good call. After we start slamming her in phase two, she doesn't really get a chance to stand up until she uses her super armor to summon a dragon. But while it's aiming its fire breath at us, puss starts shooting it, so it starts looking at him. Then I can look at Fairy Godmother and get back to butt slamming. There's a lot going on and not a lot of time. Overall, it went pretty smoothly, but I don't love how much Puss is shooting. I got the Page Ashes for his sword, but that's not the Page's preferred combat method. I think we need a new ally, and ideally, one we haven't used before. Technically, we did some things out of order because now it's time to storm Duloc Castle, avoiding the ballistas and talking to alternate universe warrior Fiona from Shrek Forever After. To be clear, this isn't saying that Fiona isn't a warrior, she's just more of a monk bard multi-class, this one's a barbarian fighter. I also make D&D videos, go watch them and request Fiona. Farquaad found a way to get taller, gluing arms to himself, but it mostly just makes him wider. When phase two starts, I get some poison on, but honestly, I don't think it mattered. In every universe, Shrek and Fiona are a power couple, I wish she could come on adventures with us. Dark foreshadowing. With two dead demigods, we can grab another pocket from the round table hold and sit on Gilka for something to put in that pocket. The ritual sword talisman will give us 10% more damage at full health, just in time to fight the cow that jumped over the moon. We already have two shard bearers defeated, but beating Radon gives us a lot of runes and more importantly continues the Humpty Dumpty quest. I summon all of Shrek's friends for a fairy tale freakdown. Humpty Dumpty, the big bad wolf, I'm still gonna call Malachite the big bad wolf later, just deal with that, and Rapunzel. At first, I thought Radon would be too fast for my butt slam, so I was just roaring from a distance. But that was kind of boring. Let's bring the boom boom. Just like the rest of the run, it was surprisingly effective here. Sure, Radon moves around fast, but his hurt box is big enough that we still get hits and stance break with these ogre cheeks. I tried to get some poison off while he was stunned, but it just doesn't come out fast enough. Still, by the time he jumped up for phase two, he only had 15% of his health left. After he jumps over the moon, it's just three more butt slams to end the fight. They were even pretty easy to get off since he slams to summon meteors 
every time. Now we can talk to Humpty Dumpty so we can eventually kill him. He's the villain in Puss in Boots. The movie's not good. The new one looks fun. We had an abundance of runes and I actually had never tested where the damage comes from with the slam. I wasn't sure if it was just tied to your weapon quality or to your strength. So I used the strength physic here and tested the slam with extra strength and without it, the answer is yeah, scales with strength. So spending those runes on strength is a okay. If it didn't scale, we probably would have just gone for mind or endurance, maybe even 60 vigor. Just kidding. We're never going to get 60 vigor. You can stop asking. It's after one soft cap. There is another one at 60, but between 40 and 60, you get less HP. I'd rather just deal damage to kill stuff faster. We beat Loretta. Then I talked to Ronnie and then to Geppetto. You might remember Selvis from the Thor run since he helps people go on adventures together as friends, but I think I made a mistake. This time I read the dialogue and I think the guy who has a bunch of life-size dolls he calls paramours and keeps in a basement isn't actually that nice. Instead of giving his potion to alt universe Fiona, I gave it to Merlin. Then I got some evidence of Geppetto's puppet mill and blackmailed him into giving us his son, Pinocchio, or the Jarride puppet. To level Pinocchio, we need to do the Ronnie quest. I'll just kind of let that play in the background while I talk about other stuff. Why would I choose Pinocchio over Fiona? First, I didn't. That was chat. I posted a poll and asked if they'd rather see Fiona Nefali, Fiona Mimic Tear, or Jarride puppet as Pinocchio. They chose the nose. Mimic Tear died. Second, I haven't used the Jar Ride Puppet yet, and if I can do new things, I'd like to. Sometimes there's gonna be overlap, but that's all the more reason to do new stuff when I can. And third, there's a Pinocchio Souls-like coming up, so now we can put that in the SEO. Also, Mukbang, ASMR. Corey, put it in the SEO. Final Glove Warts Acquired. Exicus is not Donkey's wife. Gray, not red, again. They're also a huge pain in my ass because our ass keeps hitting the ground without some flesh in between. It's just booty after booty falling through clear skies and hitting pavement. It took way longer than I'd like, but we eventually get it done and are rewarded with enough runes to level up our little wooden boy. After that frustration, I think Shrek deserves a vacation, a change of scenery, some ch-ch-ch-changes. changes Into the city of far, far away, we can jump across the buildings. It's always fun, especially with a big butt slam off the top of a building. Pinocchio gets his first fight against the Beanstalk Avatar, and his whole fighting style is throwing random pots. Fire pots, bleed pots, poison pots, frostbite pots, all kinds of pots. He actually kills it with a frostbite pot. Doing great so far. We also grab the Ritual Shield Talisman for better defense at full health. Our armor doesn't actually give a lot of protection, so that definitely matters. The fight against the Godfrey Shade is pretty uneventful. I'm noticing that we have so much poise on our butt slam that I end up taking a few hits while jumping. That might be a problem later. The Black Knife Assassin blocking the Queen's bedroom is pretty much the same as the one we killed for the Roar. Then we have to fight a rival ogre, Mogurat the Ogre King. We summon Fiona, we summon Pinocchio, and then we start slamming. I thought I could stance break him as he was summoning the swords, but I was one slam short, so I got sword slammed. After the stance breaks, he summons the swamp, but I was born in the swamp, molded by it. I hadn't seen a castle until I was already a man, and to me it was nothing but buildings. Actually, the jets hit me quite a lot, but our butt is powerful enough to bring him down and Pinocchio's bloodthirst is quenched once again. Fiona wants us to arson the beanstalk, but for that we have to go to the North Pole. In order to get there, we have to cross the Forbidden Lands. Now, somebody once told me this lift was Grand and Roldy. In Santa Land, we grab the Bell Bearing 3 and level up both our Butt Slam and our Roar to higher levels. The next boss is a large lad, so I wanted to make sure our behind is properly bulbous. That boss is Mongo, the gingerbread's much bigger brother. Technically speaking, the fire giant isn't the boss. His foot is the boss, and his attack attacks just have really weird hitboxes. As a foot, it actually moves around pretty fast, which makes us whiff quite a few times with the butt slams. And he rolls away before we can poison him. But we make it to phase two in a couple of minutes, and since he's always starting off standing still in phase two to make a bunch of fire pillars, we get the affliction. Poison is really good since it does percentage damage, and the fire giant has a lot of HP. His meteors killed Pinocchio, and our butt is dealing a lot less damage now that the boss is in his wrist. If you have a fast enough weapon, hitting him in the stump isn't that bad, but the cheeks ain't fast. And then we ran out of magic. I have to punch, something Shrek does and is good at, but I was trying to avoid. Considering this is the first or second boss if you count the dragon I've used it on, I feel pretty good about it. Donkey dies, but we can revive him with a flask after the game hits us with a pop-up window. It really becomes a war of attrition. We've been fighting for so long, I decide to play it safe to avoid losing progress. After over six minutes, we get a stance break and end it with a giant crit in the giant eye. Fiona burns down the earth tree and were warped to an unfamiliar word. What's that genre of anime called? Shrek-sekai?
The strange land we're warped to is crumbling for Ramazula. We just kind of sprint through it to grab the comment section, Grace. Jack and Jill are the next boss. Jill is skinny and tall. Jack is a teapot, short and stout. I've gotten better at this fight since it's kind of miserable and I died a lot in the early runs. There's just one move that just, I, I just, it just doesn't work like it should. The rollout. This is our first death to the Godskins, and just our fourth death overall, by the way. But computer, enhance. The first hit happens. Before my body hits the ground from the first hit, I get hit again. God, I hate the rollout. It kills me again a second time. The third time, I decide to be an elite sniper, and the roar. unfortunately, we start running out of magic, and then Bernal dies. My only hope is to apply poison and try to stall. After a bit of ring around the rosy, we turned to ashes and fall down. Sometimes, Jack just decides to roll over the column. What am I supposed to do when I do the fight right, but the game says no. This boss fight is ass, and I know ass at this point in the ass run. The victory fight isn't even that special. We just kind of got lucky and Bernal kills him. Now we're on our way from Misery to Malaketh today. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. There's a few noticeable stops on this road trip. First, that new bell bearing from the Godskins to level up our punchers all the way, or more accurately, our asses of war. To empower them even further, we need to talk to Humpty Dumpty in a hot tub, then fight him to the death in the back of Faramazula. It was over easy. He can't handle two slams from our butt, which makes sense. Try to sit on an egg at home, see how that goes. The Dragon Crest Shield Talisman is on our way for more physical damage resistance. Our tangle with the Draconic 3 Sentinel ends up being a damage trade, but he doesn't have the healing that we do, because he doesn't have any healing. Our butt goes up, we take a hit, but poise through and slam down, then heal until we eventually win. Now it's time for the big bad wolf. We bring out Pinocchio and pray for some status effects. I tried to get a poison cloud out for him to run into, but it didn't work. He jumps around so much it can be hard to land a butt slam, but occasionally our jumps will end up dodging his attacks, which is very, very cool. Phase two begins, and I thought our butt slam would get the stance break since we didn't get it in phase one. He's just getting enough time in between our slams that his stance resets. Pinocchio gets off the poison and things are looking good. Our puppet dies, but we get another slam in and Malaketh is on his last sliver of health when the poison ends. We only need to get one more hit, but I got hit with the AOE owie and died for the eighth time in the run. Brutal. Second try, Pinocchio is back. I'm not gonna try and poison him. He just won't hang out in the waft zone. We do get a stance break and I decide to gas him instead of trying to hit him with the crit before remembering poison doesn't carry over to phase two. Stance does though, so I'm hoping the two butt slams I got in will set us up for something nice. Pinocchio gets the poison again. He is an absolute legend. Then we can finish him off with a final slam and head back to Rumpelstiltskin's far, far away. Even though we killed him earlier in the run. Alternate timelines. It's weird. Merlin is next. And would you believe me if I said he was the hardest boss for this run? It's true. Gideon excels at dealing very fast, very big damage. The butt slam is slow and it's not a one shot. So our strategy has to be punishing slow moves or trading damage. Since Gideon doesn't have slow moves and deals too much damage to trade, that puts us in a predicament. Also, after the first death, he won't monologue to start the fight. He even has a sword summoning spell that covers his head, forcing us to take damage as we sit on the swords. Fourth attempt, I tried to do the roar, and it worked well enough until I ran out of stamina. The best strategy ends up being punching. I didn't want to, but butt slams and roars just aren't effective against the world's premier wizard. Again, Shrek does punch, and I feel pretty fine doing this because we've only punched two bosses and the Grail Dragon. It's fine. Up next is the Huntsman, Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. Here we run into a fun challenge where Shrek doesn't like to face the right way on his butt slams. Our first death comes from jumping up and landing right on his foot. Goes right up the poop chute. Also, it just feels like the game removed stance breaks. Even watching the footage back a second time, I am shocked how long it took to get this large lad stunned. Turns out, I just needed to be more aggressive with the damage trading to get the stance breaks. That's how we get our victory after four deaths. Some quick errands before the end game, I grabbed the Pearl Drake Talisman plus one for some holy resistance, buy some rune arts, and activate Godric's Great Rune for plus five to every step. Honestly, Radon's or Morgoth's Great Rune might have been better this time, but Godric's is faster. Into the fight. Radigan dashes too much, so I decide to fight a third boss with the fists. He can't bleed though, so I kind of feel like that's a fair compromise. Also, he can just fully 360 his hammer slammer. It is ridiculous. We get through phase one and start butt slamming God, getting a stance break nice and quickly before it begins doing the Elden Beast special, running away and ruining our ritual shield and sword buffs with chip damage from the wave. It kills us with Elden Stars, Elden Rain, and the Elden Slashes all at the same time. Good lord. 
Next try against Radagon goes smoother since I wasn't trying to butt slam right away. Starting the Elden Beast with more flasks is huge. You basically need one for Elden Stars. We were able to get a stance break around half health for a critical hit. I actually ran too far during the ring attack and had to circle back. Elden Stars lottery worked out in our favor this time, barely dealing any damage to us. After running too far again with the triple rings, we bounce back, get a few more slams to finish the game at 6 hours and 32 minutes of in-game time. 20 eye bosses slain and 18 deaths. That's gonna average out to be exactly where Vader is, strangely enough, but I'll put Vader on top and Shrek on the bottom. It makes sense, considering how much of this was slamming booty. What made the run good? Well, the butt slam is surprisingly effective, especially early game, though it does fall off a bit as the bosses get faster. The roar is a solid backup ranged option, since it doesn't require ammunition and can be boosted with the same talisman that boosts your butt slam. Poison can be useful sometimes, but you need other options for sure. Sure, we had other options. The only thing keeping this from S tier is the weak set of armor. If you threw some heavier stuff on here, trading damage would be much more effective. And there's kind of nothing more fun than beating bosses with a butt slam. It's such a treat. It would also be a fun treat to watch me do these runs live. So follow me on Twitch. We're finding new ways to beat Elden Ring all the time. Follow Julian on Twitch as well. They did the Shrek impression at the beginning. Give me money on Patreon if you want to do that. And check out my other channel if you want to see me make characters in Dungeons and Dragons.